This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Professor Frederick Carpe explores the links between obesity and diabetes. Hello, Frederick. Hi. How does obesity influence diabetes? Uh, at several levels, and uh, obesity is actually the single most important factor for the increase in diabetes we see right now. And we all know that people become fatter and fatter, so that's something we can see. Uh, the way it works is not entirely clear, but uh, we know that uh, obesity increases the demands for insulin secretion. And when the demand is not met, the pancreas does not secrete enough insulin. Uh, there isn't enough insulin around to lower the glucose. We actually get diabetes. Are there different types of obesity? Yeah, I think the focus has been very much on abdominal obesity, the male pattern type of obesity uh, because it's so well associated and strongly associated with uh, diabetes and heart disease and, and a variety of other illnesses as well. Uh, it's interesting to note however that uh, there's a female pattern of obesity that is the gynoid or the lower body fat uh, and that has opposite associations and you're actually protected as a woman with big hips. Women normally don't like to hear that but it is actually the case. And the most extreme variant is when uh, adipose tissue doesn't work any longer and you lose the fat completely or in parts of the body uh, and then you get into real trouble metabolically. I thought that fat was just stored. How could they be so different? I think that is something we are learning more and more about and uh, it's probably down to the architecture and the origin of the actual fat cells. So uh, they seem to be, when we look at them closely now, uh, to, be coming, to be coming from uh, different types of stem cells and have markers with that. And I think that in that we have some of the origins of the rather troublesome and difficult conditions I talked about, the lipodystrophy when you lose fat. And we have actually recently studied one particular patient uh, who underwent surgery, bariatric surgery for obesity, and she lost a phenomenal amount of, of fat. Uh, her diabetes disappeared only after a couple of weeks. So it, it was a bit, bit of a miracle, and we've actually never done that in such a patient before, so that is new for Oxford. What's the most important lines of research that have developed over the past five or ten years? In this particular area, obesity and the links to diabetes, I think uh, it has become clear over the past years that obesity as such emerges from uh, energy balance that is driven by satiety and that is uh, governed by central systems, uh, uh, recognition in the brain, etc. Whereas the complications of obesity, and this is new, uh, arises from uh, things going wrong in the periphery, in skeletal muscle, adipose tissue, and, uh, and also the liver. Why does your line of research matter? Why should we put money into it? Well, I think it's almost self-evident when more than 10% of the entire NHS budget goes to obesity and diabetes and its complications. And it might not be enough to count only 10% because obesity is related to so many other things that uh, cost a lot of money in society like depression, cancer uh, and other major disease areas. How does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? We have benefited a lot from uh, one of Oxford's real strengths and that's the uh, elucidation of some of the genes underlying complex disorders such as diabetes and obesity. And now is the time to uh, harvest and translate this to the benefit of patients. So we are actually funded by the Oxford Biomedical Research Centre to do research along that line. And it's not trivial, it's not an easy step to go from molecule to patient. Uh, it needs several steps and uh, one of the steps that I believe is quite important is to have a link between uh, the molecule and the patient to understand physiology and function. 
And for that reason, we have set up something called the Oxford Biobank, where we can go into the population and ask people with certain genetic variants or certain characteristics to come back and take part in research uh, and help us to understand function before we move into studying patients and uh, liaise with external companies or our own, own uh, uh, research lines to find new therapies for diabetes and obesity. Thank you, Frederick. Thank you.